Good morning and welcome to Morning Devotion for St. John's Lutheran Church of Iguanago. This is being recorded for Friday, um, November 19th. Um, pray that this week's encouragement on the end times has been an encouragement for you. Uh, pray that you enjoyed a special message from uh, Pastor uh, Kasmer from Christ Lord in Brookfield um, yesterday. So we will be doing morning prayer again next week for sure, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. I'm not sure yet uh, with Thanksgiving whether I'll be able to push one out on Thursday and Friday. We'll just have to see. But again, this is for Friday, November 19th. Um, again, the theme, we get to live with the knowledge of how things all work out in the end. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Hasten to save me, O God. O Lord, come quickly to help me. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. Be merciful to me, Lord, for I am faint. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are in agony. Turn, O Lord, and deliver me. Save me because of your unfailing love. Jesus said to his disciples, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgive him. They are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For our reading today, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning at verse 13, we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. The Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will raise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. This week we celebrated here uh, the funeral of a longtime member of St. John's, um, Betty Brissett. Um, her husband, uh, Dwayne, had uh, gone home to his Savior a couple of years ago. And I was reminded as we gather again that we Christians um, are able to gather differently in the face of this thing called death. And that's what Paul's after as he's encouraged these Thessalonian Christians. Grieving, yes, but not as the no hope, not as the no hopers do. But we grieve as those who have hope. For what reason? Verse 14, because Jesus died and rose again. Even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. And so when we go to cemeteries, when I go with my trusted pastoral companion, which which that book is is getting to be worn um, at, at, the, at, the, at the committal section, that is the book and the pages that I use specifically for the burial of Christians is beginning to be worn. My, my thumbprints are all over it and dirt, and one of the pages is even tattered because I've just been to enough cemeteries as pastor. Because we believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, something that we say week in and week out. And, and, and while it's not wrong to speak in these terms, that when our loved ones die, they go to heaven, that is a, such an absolute comfort to just hear what we say week in and week out. The resurrection of the body. This is what we're after. This is the Christian faith. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, a letter that I referenced at Betty's funeral, that uh, if Christ had not been raised, we're, we are still in our sin. We're, we're to be pitied more than all men. We are, we are to be counted as fools and we preachers. If Christ has not been raised, are told we're the... We're, we're wasting breath with our preaching if Christ has not been raised. But Christ has indeed been raised. And, and Paul just reminds us in 1 Thessalonians 4, and now I remind you, these are words for encouragement. 
I do believe in the resurrection of the body. I do believe that God is going to give your dead ones back to you and my dead ones back to me. I do believe that all bodies will rise and the bodies of God's children will rise to everlasting life with him. I do believe that the cemetery is a resting place. It's a sleeping place. I do believe that Oak Knoll is it's temporary. I do believe that these graves will not contain our children. I do believe that Christ is risen. And I do believe there is so much courage and encouragement for you in those words, in living and in dying. As an old friend says, we live all of our lives graveside. We live all of our lives on the way to the cemetery. We live all of our lives one day closer to the day of our death. And this we need not fear, because I believe in the resurrection of the body and the life of the world to come. St. Paul says, encourage one another with those words, all in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, I call to you. Be merciful to me and hear my prayer. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God and Savior, you have set the final hour and day when we shall be delivered from this world of sin and death. Keep us ever watchful for the coming of your Son, that we may sit with him and all your holy ones at the marriage feast in heaven. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power and grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Our morning prayer will conclude with a selection from our seminary choir, Lord, when your glory I shall see. We have opportunity, um, a great opportunity here at St. John's on the first Sunday in December. The seminary choir, under the direction of Professor Aaron Christie, will be with us for our 8 and 1030 services to give a preview of their Christmas concert. So the annual seminary Christmas concert held every year up in Mequon on the 12th uh, will be also presented here uh, for a run through um, on December uh, 5th. And we're very much looking forward to that. So, all right. Have a blessed weekend.